or a co external hard drives. Oracle has been just absolutely pumping out products on the market and the prices are very fair, to be honest, they're very fair. Uh, so I just bought a bunch of them. They come in different sizes. They're slightly different features. They are, these are all externals. They also have internals as well. I've been working on some internal reviews. Some of them are live, some of them are coming out and I wanted to cover them. So we have here a 2000 megabyte per second 512 external drive, A20 plus. Cute little guy. That's a 20 gigabyte per second one. There's another one here that's the same. Yeah, this one. I don't know what the difference is. They probably have NVMEs though inside because of the speeds. So that's cool. Uh, there's two of these here. Uh, this one here is a long boy rather than a square boy or a rectangle boy. This one here is a C10, 10,000 or 1,000 megabytes a second. Cool. And uh, this one here is the B5. And this one here is 500 megabytes a second. This one here is a magnetic one. It will stick to the back of your phone, in theory. Uh, yeah, MagSafe, Make Pro, MagSafe. Uh, these ones are not magnetic, at least as far as I know. So let's open them up. So we will start with, uh, I guess this one here, for that one there. So we have USB A and C, convertible. Uh, the cord goes up to 10, so they're just you know, universal cords that these guys have. Mm, cute little guy, plastic, not heavy, uh, it's five and it has a light that probably will light up when it's on. So that's that one. Uh, this is the long boy. This one's metal. It also has a ring, so you can use it to like as bling bling. Look at that swag. Uh, 10 gigabit on this one here. Probably an NVMe in there as well, I would guess. It's fine. Uh, this one here, because it will be faster. So it's got a little plastic carrying case. That's 20, so that's nice. There we go. Okay, so we'll put that one in there. Nice little lanyard thing. Great for on-the-go professionals and students. And it's a lot of data. One terabyte is actually a lot. I mean, you could do, even if you're like a wedding photographer or something, I mean, you could get up above that pretty fast over a whole wedding, but um, photos, probably not. Videos, maybe. That's quite a bit of data. That's good. Cute little guy. Plastic, not heavy, which is important because it's going to need to magnetize to my phone. Just a big chunk of metal. And that's the smooth side, so it doesn't scratch your phone. I don't, I feel like that was not needed. Yeah, it's, even with the case, it's magnetic, okay. So, yeah, that's fine. That's the way it goes there. Okay, so, um, geez, uh, we're gonna test these now on my computer. Uh, just throw some data on, see what kind of things are going on with them, that kind of stuff. Uh, this one here though is a little bit different, so I will just show you this uniqueness of this specific product. Uh, so this one here, you go like that, and then you go like that, and then you go like that. And why is this interesting? Okay, so here's a video of my pups doing pup stuff. Okay, so we're gonna go like this, and we go export like that, we go back, and then we put it on the Oracle like that. And yeah, so then we can come back in here, we'll go to files, and now it's on my it's on here. So it went on there. Perfect. So uh, this is a large iPhone, one terabyte. Uh, you can get smaller ones and then as a result, save a ton of money. You can come into your settings here and there's lots of different formats here, most compatible, high efficiency, whatever. Uh, you can also do ProRes. Now ProRes HDR uh, is massive. So what happens is it records multiple files in their pure form and it's in HDR as well. Uh, it's a higher dynamic range. You're going to get much more contrast. The video files are massive. So if you're doing real professional, like more than me, like real professional professional, uh, ProRes is fantastic. Now, the video files are massive. Uh, I find that in some cases, ProRes 1080p can look better than non-ProRes in 4K. Now, it doesn't have the same resolution, but the vibrancy is better. The contrast, because it's HDR, is better. It just looks fantastic. And you just get higher bandwidth than that. So um, you can do that. Now, the problem is, uh, we'll pull this out here. We'll go like this, ProRes. You can't record 4K60 ProRes on your phone. You're not allowed. Probably because you would fill your phone very fast. It might cause degradation of the storage, might overheat it, or they just don't let it because it's crazy. But if you plug in a external device like that, what it will do is it will record directly. All right, chill out. It will record directly onto the storage device. So when I'm recording now and I'm in ProRes 4K60, it's not going to record uh, 
onto my phone, it's gonna record onto the external device, which is sweet. And you can just plug it then directly into your computer and do your video editing. Awesome. You can do, we'll go, for, we'll go 1080p. So 1080p ProRes, we can do. So we'll pull that out. Uh, the phone will allow me to record 1080p 60 ProRes, but not 4K. Uh, so you can do USB-A if you have a USB-A enabled device, but it won't be able to go as fast. USB-A just doesn't go as quick. Uh, typically they max out at like SATA speeds, so just be aware of that. Uh, it's fast, so this is a Thunderbolt 4 capable slot, and uh, this is giving us, uh, which is 40 gigabit, this is 20 gigabit, so it's half that fast speed, but it's very fast. So it's working, it's working exactly as it should. That is very fast, that is very fast, to be honest. If you're gonna be moving large data, like video files and that, it is going to make a difference. Oh. It is going to make a difference. Don't need to go through all of them. It is going to make a pretty big difference with moving very large data and we'll go like that. So what I want to see here is if it's going to tank down. The writing drive is this one here. The drive that I'm reading off of is a USB 4, so it's faster. Um, and you will never get real world 2000 megabytes a second speed. It's never going to happen. It's always synthetics. Uh, this is fast considering the type of data that I'm moving. This is very fast. Some drives you'll come here, the cache will drop down after 50 gigabytes, maybe 100, and then it just it's incredibly slow. We're talking like a couple megabytes a second. So the cache ran out at uh, about mm, 200 gigabytes, which is pretty good. I find a lot of these externals run out at about 80 to 100 gigabytes, which is like it can be unusable because I mean, sometimes one of my videos can be like 100 gigabytes super annoying and games <laughs> games are easily 100 gigabytes these days so running out of cash on a game is crap moreover which also is pretty sweet here is it didn't completely tank this is still reasonable we'll put it that way okay so this is the next one here so this one is uh 10 gigabit or a thousand megabytes a second so we should get around a thousand megabytes a second continue the test that's done i don't want to just keep make this video too long. This one's about the same. We got actually slightly more, but close. We got about 240 uh, gigabyte, gigabytes here before it the cache ran out. So it's basically the same drive. It probably is the same drive inside. It's just the interface. This is a 10 gigabit. This is a 20 gigabit. Both fantastic. Okay, so this one is five gigabit. So I expect around SATA speeds. It might be a SATA interface. Yeah, it's probably SATA interface inside, like a little SATA chip. Five gigabit speeds, so I assume it's gonna be fine. So it runs exactly at SATA speeds, that's good. Okay, so the next thing is, the last thing I guess we'll say is we'll move the data onto this one. Okay, so this one ran uh, about the same, uh, a little bit less, so we've got about, it's about half-ish, 200 gigabytes. So 200 versus 300, it's actually relatively more based on the size of the drive, but it's fine. Uh, fantastic drive, runs at five gigabit per second. Uh, that's 500 megabytes a second. Gonna be fantastic for things gaming, honestly. All of my gaming, all of my game tests, all of my videos, personal, all done on a drive of this size. This thing will be fantastic for gaming. Drive here, uh, faster, twice as fast technically. Uh, it's also twice as large, but they all come in different sizes. So if you need more speed, if you're doing something like, you know, moving, I mean, moving games around a little bit, but also doing, you know, moving around some videos, some pictures, larger data, uh, that kind of stuff. This can be fantastic. It will give you more speed and it looks very reliable. Uh, this is kind of cream, creme de la creme, cream of the crop here. Uh, you get 20 gigabyte, uh, 20 gigabit. So that's 2000 megabytes a second, very fast. So this would be good for people who do large videos, you know, moving around a lot. Maybe like you do like wedding photography or something like that. You have huge amounts of data, you know, several hundred gigabytes per day that you're moving around and you don't want to wait for the speed of something like this, which would take you know, maybe 20 minutes to transfer. This would take maybe five minutes to transfer. And then of course we have the camera one here uh, that goes into your iPhone and allows you to shoot ProRes 4K video, 4K60, which you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. And you can just offload it. So all of them are great. Uh, they all exceed my expectations. I don't know why I didn't have the highest expectations because everything that I've tested from Orico, uh, videos coming on some of them. I buy all these things. So, you know, we'll see what the videos come with. Uh, yeah, they're all been very good. This is a case where they're all good. So buy them, you will enjoy them. They're fantastic. Uh, yeah, that's it. They're good.